In the previous video we set up this scene and put a camera into it so that we could compose a nice picture. Um, in this uh, video we want to look at rendering this picture and adding lights to it. Uh, the lights that we can use in um, Maya um, are under this Arnold tab here and you'll see that there are six of them that we can use. In an earlier video I did mention these briefly and the three that I'm going to focus on today really quickly are this one which is an area light, this one which is a sky dome light and this one which is a physical sky. I'm going to start with the sky dome and the physical sky because in some ways they're the simplest ones and then I'm going to go to the area light and we're going to set up a standard three point lighting setup. So first of all this one here is a sky dome light. A sky dome light works by encircling your entire scene in a big sphere which will then um, be used to uh, cast light upon your whole scene. So imagine that you've put a sphere around your scene and that light is emitted from every single um, part of that sphere. And what it gives you is a very um, even coverage of light over your entire scene. So if we render this, just click on this um, button up here that looks like an eye. And we click the render button here. You can see a previous render that I've done there. You'll get an image that looks something like this. You can see my render here doesn't exactly match my view over here um, and the main reason for that is just that my um, render window here, uh, the, the size of the camera, is taking a, a 16 to 9 format shot and this one's not at 16 to 9 format over here. So maybe what I want to do first before I play around with this any further and just using this um, skylight here um, is to just refine my um, composition a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click this IPR button. The IPR renderer will give me an interactive renderer so it's going to keep rendering the scene. Every time I make a change to the scene to move the camera or something like that we'll see it updated over here and it will give me an opportunity to compose my scene the way I want it to be. So the thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to select my camera and I'm just going to move my camera down a bit And then what I should see is that updated over here. If it doesn't update immediately over here, click this IPR refresh button here. Now, the other thing that might be happening um, if, it if it still doesn't refresh is that you might find that um, your camera that you're currently using, which is down here, is the wrong one. In this case it's using perspective shape and I want camera 1 to be the camera that this is rendering through. That's easy enough to fix. You just pop up to your render menu here go down to render and then you can see it's the current is the perspective camera we want it to be camera one so select that and we should get a render that looks like this over here that menu is going to stick up there until this render finishes Okay, so we can already see that that's looking a little bit better and it's certainly representing this view over here a bit. So you can see with this kind of light, um, one of the features of a sky dome light is um, flat even lighting across the whole scene. Um, we can see the detail in these um, characters pretty well um, and there's not much light being cast, there's no shadow being cast, there's just this kind of shadow around the bottom here, sort of a vague shadow underneath each object. So this is great for flat lighting, maybe um, certain kinds of indoor lighting and lighting where you want to focus the attention of the viewer more on the content of the scene rather than having any kind of subtlety to the lighting. So let's move on to um, the other kind of lighting here, this one uh, which is a physical sky. What we'll do is we'll just click over here in our um, outliner on our sky dome light and we'll just delete that with the delete key. And then what we'll do is we'll add in a physical, um, a physical sky. And when you add in a physical sky you'll notice in your uh, viewports over here that the background goes black. Um, and if we render this now you'll see that a few things change. We can still see there's plenty of light in there, we can still see what's going on, but now we've got some shadows being cast. So each of these dogs is casting a shadow on itself and there's a shadow falling across the ground too. Also you'll notice that the light has a kind of an orange tinge to it. 
The reason for this is that this particular um, light source is simulating a sky with the sun in it. And in fact, we can go and tweak some of the properties of that uh, by selecting our sky dome light over here. And then over in our attribute editor, we can adjust some of these things. If we click on the physical sky tab, you'll see that there's some properties here. Um, Two of the properties that are um, immediate, I won't go through all of them, but two of the properties that are immediately useful are elevation and azimuth. Elevation is how high the sun is in the sky, and it's a number between 0 and 90, with 0 meaning 9, 0 degrees and 90 meaning 90 degrees. So 90 degrees means the light is directly overhead. Let's do an IPR render so we can see the effect of some of these changes. So you can see now that the light is falling directly from overhead and the shadows are falling directly underneath the uh, dogs. If we change the elevation back to uh, something small like 15, the sun now is going to be close to the horizon and you can see that it's gone quite orange. Um, so it's basically simulating a sunset at this point. So it's generating a physical sky, it's trying to give us a simulation of a real sky. The azimuth value here is how many degrees around the centre of our scene the sun is coming from. So at the moment at 90 degrees the sun's coming basically along the z-axis. If we change this to uh, say um, 45 degrees, then you'll see that the sun, you can see the shadows are changing direction as the sun moves around. If we change it to zero degrees, the shadows are now going to be moving out this way. So we're just changing the position of the sun and the sky. If we were to turn our scene around and have a look behind us, we'd actually see a blue sky up there as well. And if we were looking at the sun, you would see an image of the sun or, or um, a big bright blob in the sky at that point. So this is kind of cool and it's a kind of useful way to um, simulate the sun and it's great if you're uh, maybe doing uh, some kind of an architectural model and you wanted to simulate the sun at different times of the day and see how um, a particular building would work at a particular place. Okay, so that is our, um, that is our um, physical sky light. Both of these light sources are pretty easy to use, you just turn them on and they're there. Come back over here and select your um, AI Sky Dome Light 1 and delete it again. Um, your IPR render will go black because there's no light in there anymore. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start adding in some area lights. Area lights can be added in by clicking this button over here. And an area light, if we click that button, you'll see it appear in the middle of our scene here. It's basically a rectangle. If you move it up here. So it's basically a rectangle that emits light. And you can see it just emitting light onto that dog that it's right in front of there. It emits light in a direction that's given by this little stick that comes out the front of it. So let's have a bit of a look, we'll zoom in on it here and you can see it a bit more closely. If we move it back, in fact what I'll do is I'll move it right back out of our scene over to here. And we'll zoom in and just pan that a bit and you can see what it looks like. So basically it's this green thing and it's got a stick coming out of it and that stick that's coming out of it there shows us the direction that the light is being cast in. So as we move this into our scene and move it closer you can start to see it casting some light on the floor and then as we move it closer to that dog there you can see it casting light on the dog. Now you can see that it doesn't give off much light at the moment. It's only it's only lighting up a very small area and that light is falling off pretty fast. The light's also being cast over the rectangular region of this uh, light source. We can actually increase the size of the light source just by scaling it. So if we uh, go into our scale tool, we can scale this up and make it bigger. And you can see that a couple of things happen when we make it bigger. It More light gets cast, but because we're putting the same amount, the same amount of energy as in the light, um, as we had in the light before, it's not, it's actually dimmer. So you might have noticed that got dimmer there. So what we need to do is we need to be able to control the intensity of the light. As we make the light source bigger or as we move it further away, we need to make it bigger so that it gives us some um, lighting. So let's uh, give that a go. Over here in our um, light properties, so if, you, if we select our AI area light one, and have a look over here in our attribute editor, you'll see that there's a color value, an intensity value, and an exposure value here. 
There are also a whole bunch of other values, but for now we'll just focus on these. So the intensity value is how much energy is in the light source. And if we push this up, you can see that the light is getting brighter as I put it up. Now that'll take us all the way up to 10 if we move that all the way over to the right. But there's nothing stopping us coming in here and typing our own values into here. So at 50, it's quite a bright light source and it's now starting to light the back wall of the scene too. As we move the light source away from that dog, we'll start to see it lighting up other parts of the scene as well. Okay, so let's um, set up, let's use our area lights to set up what we call a um, three-point uh, light source or a three-point lighting setup. A three-point lighting setup is a standard kind of lighting setup that's used in the uh, photography and film industry as a kind of like standard 101 lighting setup. Um, and basically what it consists of is, as the name suggests, three lights. One light is called a key light and it provides the primary source of light in your scene. Um, then you've got a second light, which is a fill light, which is designed to put a bit of light back into these shadows here so they're not completely black. And then the third light um, puts a bit of light behind the scene so that some of these back areas of our objects get a bit of light on them and that gives them, distinguishes them a bit from the background. So this light here is our key light. So we're just going to call this one key light. And we're going to make sure this key light is giving us the basic lighting in our scene that we want. Um, generally speaking with a key light, you're going to be placing it at um, a 45 degree angle to your camera. Although it doesn't really matter where you place it. Um, in a lot of classical paintings you'll see the light source is sort of placed up a bit higher um, than, the, than the subject so that you've got shadows kind of being cast down under necks and things like that. But really you can do anything you want with this light source. You can place it wherever you want and you might decide that it's not quite bright enough so we might decide to make our light source a bit brighter here uh, and we'll do that through our intensity value here. Okay, so I'm happy with that as my, as my, um, as my primary key light. So the next light that we want to use is going to be a fill light. So in order to do that we're just going to duplicate this light because we already like the way this light's working. So we'll just duplicate it, control D, and you can see straight away that you've got an even brighter scene. But we'll move this light over to the side and forward a bit. So a fill light normally goes at 90 degrees to your key light. Okay, so there we put it at 90 degrees and we're going to rotate this guy so that it's pointing at the scene. Because if we don't rotate it, it's going to be pointing the wrong way. Okay. Close enough. Um, Okay, the next thing we want to do with our, with our fill light is that if we just leave our fill light at the same intensity level as our, um, as our key light, then the shadows, the, these areas here on the side which were in shadow before are going to be the same, have the same sort of lighting as the, as the key light. So usually you want to drop the intensity of this light a bit so that it just adds a little bit more detail so we can see those shadowed areas. So the idea is to have some light in those shadowed areas but still let the shadows come through. Right, so that's looking pretty good there like that. And then finally we need our backlight. Now our backlight is going to go directly opposite the camera, so back over here somewhere. It's going to be up high and it's going to be pointing down at our scene. So we'll take our initial one over here, we'll duplicate that, and then we'll move it right into this uh, so it's kind of like we'll draw a line from the camera through the lookout point, our lookout point's here so through from the camera through the lookout point to somewhere back out here and you'll see that this uh, this light is pointing against the wall so I want to, you can see it's really lighting up the wall a lot there so we're going to rotate this light around 
and we're going to rotate it so that it's pointing back at the um, at the at the uh, camera aim point. And then we're going to uh, move it up a bit higher, right? So we're going to have it up a bit higher like this. And then we're going to angle it down so it's pointing at the scene. Okay, and you can see the effect that's getting there. This little back part of the dog here has got a little bit of light on it now, and there's a little bit of light coming off here as well. So these, what we're doing is we're just adding a little bit of extra complexity to the lighting with a three-point lighting setup. Now this backlight here, you might even decide, you might want to leave it at the same intensity as the foreground light, or you might just want to drop its intensity a little bit. Depending on what you're doing, you might want to add a bit of um, warmth to these lights as well. So this front light here, this key light, you might want to make this key light just have a tiny little bit of orange in it. So we'll just like select a bit of orange here. Okay, and you can see the effect that's having. Like I only put a tiny little bit of orange into it. It has quite a big effect. The reason I'm putting orange into this light source is that it warms my scene. It's not quite as stark and grey as it was before. And we can counteract that orange that's in there a little bit by adding in a complementary opposite colour for the shadow areas. So we'll add a little bit of purpley blue in here. And again, just a little bit. But what it does here is it makes our shadowed areas lit slightly with a slightly blue colour. So we've got a slightly orange colour at the front, a slightly blue colour to the side. Notice how, how subtle it is. If we make if we go too far, if we go all the way up here, it's just like it's 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 over the top. It's too theatrical. And then there might be times when you want to do this, but generally speaking, we want to keep this kind of subtle in here, right? So we're gonna like not have it too bright, not have it too saturated, keep it right down here like this. So we've just got a hint of blue in that scene there. Okay, so um, that's a three-point lighting setup. So we've gone through a, um, a, a sky dome light and a physical skylight, and now we've used a three-point lighting setup with area lights. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, take these from uh, boring grey objects and we're going to start putting some uh, materials on them.